on call with the Prairie Doc After Hours. We had a lot of great questions submitted beyond what we could answer during the broadcast portion of our show, so let's just get started. A woman from Sioux Falls, Vance, called and would like doctors to talk about exotropia and is wondering if a corneal transplant would help this. So she's got exotropia, what is that? That's when the eyes turn out. And so when the eyes turn in, we call it esotropia. When they turn out, we call it exotropia. And, and so what we do to treat exotropia, especially uh, in adults, is we'll uh, change and tighten the mu inner muscle and loosen the outer muscle so that the eye can turn in. It, when it's a child, uh, we're looking for other things, be especially with eyes that turn in. Sometimes if they're farsighted, their eyes are working hard to focus through the farsightedness, and it kicks in all, what we call the near triad. When we read, our pupil gets littler, our lens accommodates, and our eyes turn in. And so with a baby, if their eyes are turning in from the lenses working too hard to see, a pair of glasses allows them to relax and their eyes be straight. But if that's not enough, with exo or eso, we can straighten the eyes. A corneal transplant would have nothing to do with, with exotropia. It's a separate issue that may need to be done also, but that's a separate issue. Uh, they call that lazy eye. One eye is doing something, the other one is they use. You know, we don't necessarily call it lazy eye. That's typically used for what's called amblyopia. And so in a young child who's trying to develop good vision, if you and I develop double vision, or an eye turning out, we, develop, we see two images. Right. In a child, what happens is they turn off one of the images. So they'll see single with the eye that's seen straight. They'll turn this off. And we got to either use patching of the good eye to get them to use this eye until we figure out how to make it straight with surgery or glasses. And, and so it's lazy eyes typically amblyopia. Right. And sometimes they'll get their muscles working better. Yes. Right, they'll just exercise that muscle until exactly. it recovers exactly. and then suddenly they, can, they yes. can use both eyes. Yes. A woman from Leed would like to know if the doctors would please give a little more information on floaters. What are they and what causes them? So, very quickly. Typically, floaters are in the vitreous gel, and they represent either the vitreous condensing or the vitreous where it's separated from the retina. You want to get checked to make sure there's not a retinal tear or detachment, but usually it's just vitreous floaters. Usually time takes care of them kind of like the snowflakes in the little Christmas village mm -hmm. thing. So they'll all settle they'll down. They'll settle eventually. down, and if they don't, and they're causing big blur, you can have them removed, but usually you don't have to. Okay. Man from South Dakota has cataract surgery scheduled. He's heard that Flomax, a drug used for urinary issues, can be a problem with his surgery. Why is this, and should he stop taking the Flomax? So Flomax relaxes smooth muscle, and it helps people uh, who have to get up and frequently urinate not not have to do it so often because it's right. relaxing that muscle. Well, the iris muscle is a smooth muscle also. And and so what happens is Flomax makes it so the, eye, the pupil doesn't dilate so well. And you can see even in the pictures that we use tonight that the cataract sits behind the pupil. And if you as a surgeon have to work through a teeny pupil, uh, that is with a real flaccid iris from Flomax, it makes it more of a challenge. But we have our ways. Today I had three people on Flomax. I was able to do their cataract surgery, uh, no problem. If I would have had my druthers, we'd do the cataract surgery before Flomax, right. but we don't always have that choice. Right, okay, that's a good question. A viewer from Facebook would like to know if Dr. Thompson has finished his research on the aging eye and the need for reading glasses, what new advancements have been done to correct the need for reading glasses. We have a whole bunch of things that we help people with bifocals or reading glasses uh, be able to do reading without them. The most powerful though is to actually go to the problem. And the problem is the lens that sits right behind our pupil that zooms in to read. When it loses that zoom and it starts to get cloudy, that's a cataract. We can replace it with a lens that just replaces the clarity, or we can replace it with a lens that also reads. And so it's important to learn about lens implant options. And every now and then we'll have someone who's, you know, they're 58 years old and they need reading glasses so bad and on their job it's really affecting them, and they want to do lens replacement to restore the reading ability. But usually we wait till it's a cataract. You can't make the lower half of the lens readability 
level right. and the other right. the top. Some people will think that because of bifocals. Right. You know, we can look through the top and see distance and the bottom and see near. Right. But if you do that to your lens, uh, you're basically going to always have that reading power in there and it's going to cause tremendous nighttime glare. Right. Now, I've heard that some people will have LASIK surgery where their one eye is made perfect for a distance and their other eye is made good for close-up. Yes, exactly like with contacts where you can do distance eye, near eye, monovision. You can do that with LASIK also. And it's a very powerful way of helping people with near, but we like to really show them with lenses what that means because some people don't like that. Some people's brains automatically accommodate it to it. So I have a, someone in the back room who asked me, I had that same thing and it worked for a while, but it kind of lost its, its punch. Right. Can you get it redone? Well, you know, when you go to the reading glasses store, you'll see a one power for a 40-year-old and a two for a 50 and a three for a 60 because as we get older and that lens isn't zooming in, yeah. we need stronger reading glasses. Yeah. So if you do a monovision contact and it's not working, you know, five or six years later, you get a yeah. stronger contact. With LASIK, you would need to add power to it five or six years later. So the LASIK doesn't wear off. It's just the internal eye is not zoom. Its, it loses its zoom. It loses its zoom. That makes me think about the reading glasses that I have at my bedside that I actually read at night. And that's what I, yeah. I use those readers. Right. But I don't use them any other time. I right. use my regular glasses that have... No the, line bifocals. Right. Um, what about Sjogren's syndrome? A woman from Huron has Sjogren's and her eyes are always painfully dry. Could doctors recommend a good eye drop? So that's the question. There's this, the, it's almost the same question of what's a good mouthwash for a person who has dry mouth? Right. What's a good eye drop for a person who has dry eyes? Well, it's a really good question, and we actually hit on the diseases, some of the right. autoimmune, when we were talking about rheumatoid arthritis. Sh Sjogren's and one of them. Yeah. Sjogren's can happen with some of these other diseases, but can right. happen alone. And typically, it means a dry eye. And there's great treatments for it, but one of the things we like to do, be, you can do tear film replacement. We talked about artificial tears. Right. Um, but you can also, we talked about the tear drains tonight. We can plug the tear drains so that even though your tear production's reduced, we can decrease how quickly they leave your eye. Kind of like putting a, 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 dra a, a, a cork in the sink drain so yeah. that the, the sink fills up quicker. Yeah. Punctal plugs work great. But there's also really important drops. We used to use short courses of steroids for the anti-inflammatory effect, and sometimes still do, but topical cyclosporin has been absolutely huge, and that's what Restasis is, that's what Zydra is, and so you get the anti-inflammatory effect of steroids without the side effect of steroids like cataracts and glaucoma. Right. It, uh, but do you have side effects? I mean, cyclosporin is one of those drugs that you worry about some side effects when you're taking it orally. Right, it's such a low percentage that really there's not a safe. side effect. It can sometimes cause stinging and burning. And then the other thing that was beautifully mentioned tonight was the clogged ducts in the eyelids. Yeah. And that's where sometimes we need to warm the eyelids and squeeze out those clogged ducts and treat all three layers, the watery part, the sugary part, and the fatty part of the tear film. Okay, wow. A woman from Gettysburg would like to know if the doctors could talk about DSEK. So DSEK, and that's that's where we're talking about decimase membrane, which is, and that's the D of DSEK, and that's where that back layer in the cornea that looks like a honeycomb that sucks water out of the cornea into right. the eye. Right. So the cornea is that outer pane of yep. glass that's curved that does a lot of the refraction. The inside, you know, internal part yep. of that window pane. And that's, so when we're replacing that layer, that's called a DSEC. Oh, so that's a treatment for Fuchs dystrophy. That's a treatment for Fuchs. Okay. A woman from Rapid City is 32 and has congenital cataracts. Is surgery benefit beneficial or should she wait? And, uh, wh what about congenital cataracts? So congenital means that she was born with it and they can develop an opacity that can affect how good vision developed. They might not have the capability of seeing 2020 because the image that was presented to the brain in visual development wasn't sharp enough and they developed what we call amblyopia, the lazy eye thing. Yeah. And, and so the first exam we try to do is try to figure out what is the blur they were born with that removing it is probably not gonna help it. And it's nice if you have past exams. So if they 
were 2025 or 2030 when they were 10, and now they're 2050 or 2060, worse down the chart, uh, or having a hard time passing their driver's test, then it's probably gonna help. If it's still the same blur that they had when they were five, not probably great. not gonna help. Okay, wow. Um, a woman from Worthington, Minnesota would like to know, is it typical for a person with a cataract in one eye to get one in the other? And what is astigmatism? So typically cataracts happen in both eyes. One reason that it might not, if it's due to trauma, you know, or if you were just using... Pop bottle rocket in oh, the eye or... That's why I don't like fireworks. And if you use them, wear protective eyewear and make sure everybody around you does. As far as astigmatism, that's when the cornea, the front window of the eye, isn't perfectly round like a basketball. Because remember, the cornea, that curvature is what focuses light. And if it's round like a basketball, it's focusing every light ray to a nice crisp focal point. If there's astigmatism, that front window is more like a football shape. And you know in the laces part of the football, to get your hand around it, yeah. it's more curved. Right. And the end-to-end -end part of the football is a more gradual curve. And if it's that curvature that bends light, the sharp curve bends it fast, the long curve bends it slow, so you get multiple focal points in blur. Okay. And you can treat astigmatism with glasses, contacts, or surgery. So the foot, the ends of the football are on, on either side, and yep. it's the curve this yep. way and the curve this way that are different. Right. I get it. Uh, now I get it. It's a visual yes. for me. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's astigmatism, and it's not typical for cataracts to be in one eye is what you're, the answer. That, yeah, typically that. it happens in both. But the first one can present and be ready for surgery, and the other one may take five years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A woman from Sioux Falls would like the doctors to explain the progression of retinal therapy. The progression of retinal therapy. Now, I think what she might be is retinopathy. Yeah. Retinopathy being the illness in the back of the eye that you see with diabetes, for right. example. And that's why usually they're due to something going on in the body. Like, like diabetes, like high blood pressure. And that's why it's so important to treat what's happening in the whole body, to make that more healthy, and the progression of the retinopathy improves. You said at the beginning of the show, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Yeah. And that's why it's such a perfect example in her question, because the retina tells you the health of all the blood vessels in the body, the brain, the heart. And that's why if there's something going on with retinal blood vessels due to something like diabetes or hypertension, you want to treat that, and then you can see that that's getting better, and then this is getting better. Yeah. Right. And one more reason to exercise every single day. Get yes. a 30 minute walk every day. Did I say that? Did yes. I say that? Yes. 30 minutes every day. We should all do that. Yes. All of us. Yes. A woman from Bel A woman from Belfouche wonders if an optic nerve has ever been developed in a test tube and if so, can you know, how does she, she get one? Right. Well, you know, you go to opticnerve.com. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> no, there's know, no yeah. answer. Is there? And 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 basically, they're, 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 they have developed elements of nerves in test tubes, but they can't figure out how to connect uh, to the photoreceptors of the retina to the brain. And and so, optic nerve problems are the most frustrating. And there's things they're trying to do to bypass the brain because some, I mean, I'm sorry, bypass the optic nerve because right. the retina can sometimes still recognize and be stimulated. And if you can somehow get that have, message to the brain, yes, have an electrode or something that's going to get that energy to the visual cortex. There's amazing research being done, but not optic nerve replacement. I, I heard of that same kind of re research discussed on NPR one Saturday afternoon during right. a jog. And I have to say that, of course, it's never really as good as... But you, so you don't want retinopathy. You don't no. want to lose your optic nerve. Right. You know, and those are... That's dangerous. why I get those checkups for glaucoma. Yeah. Every year, get that pressure checked after the age of 40. So important. Right. And every two or three years before the age of 40. Okay. And the final question is, how serious are infections of the eyelids? You know, the hordeolum and right. the meibomium cysts and so on. Explain you, those. You would be amazed how common that is. It's so common. In, 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 in infl infection and inflammation along the eyelid margin, we call it blepharitis. Uh, 
And blepharitis can be due to bacteria, it can be due to mites. Demodex is a very common mite. Um, and it's the same mite that can also affect things like acne rosacea. Right. And, and so these things can be diagnosed and they can be treated. They're not something that's typically gonna lead to hurting your sight. Uh, but they can sometimes scar your eyelid margins and lead to chronic changes there. So you, you do want to try to control them. And we had a, another question on Facebook that asked about dry eyes and Zydra. Yeah. So Zydra would be another form of cyclosporin, like Restasis. It's almost like uh, a little stronger form of Restasis. And so sometimes we'll use Restasis, sometimes we'll use Zydra. Um, but they're both really good ways to help uh, turn down inflammation. Turn down inflammation because what happens as we get older, uh, we get you know white blood cells or lymphocytes, inflammatory cells that infiltrate our tear-producing glands. Whether it's the you know watery-producing part or the sugary-producing part, you want to treat that inflammation, and that's what's so beautiful about something like Zydra or Restasis. Okay, great. Well, I, this is the end of our show. We've got our questions covered. I can't tell you how much I appreciate yeah. it. I've super enjoyed this, it. This has been yeah. really fast, Thank hasn't you. it? It's Thank about you the so fastest much. moment you can turn around yeah. and suddenly an hour Amazing. is done. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for joining us on our website and on Facebook. Actually, you're on our Facebook uh, website. We'll come up with the with the, with the uh, this, but it will be next, starting in a couple of days. Uh, web, but but we can do Facebook, and it's it, it's flowing right now. That's awesome. We appreciate all of your questions and the opportunity to answer them. Until next time, from all of us at On Call with the Prairie Doc, stay healthy out there, people.